Welcome, everybody, to the Alternative Support Show, powered by Virgin Magazine. I'm Matthew Connell, running this show solo for once, and I am joined by Oliver Rowland, at Nissan Edams, Form the E, currently live and direct out of Mexico. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, very well, thank you. How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing very well. I'm very excited because I've been doing a little weather check, and for Puebla, it is looking, it could cause a spicy affair. Um, Preparation-wise... How how is this going to affect what's coming up on this double header? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, it's already pretty tricky to 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 get ready for the new race any weekend. But uh, obviously, when there's rain around, it makes things different, especially on the energy management side. Our races are based on time, not lack, so it can also change how much we need to to save and, and, and use throughout the race. So yeah, it should be pretty tricky and pretty interesting to see with the amount of grip. Um, that we may get and if the rates may change and things like that. I did, a, a, I did my little cheeky weather check beforehand because, of course, back here, um, back home, as you probably noticed before you left, we were in the middle of a heat wave. The weather's completely turned upside down. I was kind of jealous that all the Formula E crew, our good friends like Darren, who presents for Formula E, I'm flying out and could see on the Instagram how beautiful it was looking in Puebla. But obviously the weather has turned, so I'm slightly happy, but... Half, still half jealous because of course you guys down in Mexico what a place to be um so let's let's talk about the season um so far of course it's um had its ups and downs looks like it's kind of trending in the right direction um since we had well what I mentioned off air we first crossed paths I think it was back in 2019 I was I was actually behind the camera filming for motorsport for a, a shell piece of content at Tempelhof which on that weekend your teammate Sebastian Buemi had won <laughs> A year later, yourself obviously was a race winner at Berlin. So we've, you know, having now got a race win under the belt in the world of Formula E, how does that do for you psychologically now going into races and how you approach things? Obviously, you know, I think, you know, you touched on this season and, and so far it's been actually pretty, pretty good. Um, if you look at the, the pace and the performances, it's been up there probably with anybody. And um, we're a little bit unfortunate in Rome to have the drive through and also the lunch here. Um, with the wet race, which ended a little bit badly for most people, I think. But, um, yeah, like you said, you know, <clears throat> first year in season five, I was getting as I could. Um, and then, yeah, moving into into season six, I had more experience and I, and I did well. You know, I won a race. I and mean, it's just really been building on confidence and, and building on what I've learned and what I've understood and, and, and going from strength to strength, really. And for those that don't yet follow in our audience, um, we, we started talking to a lot more of your colleagues from the world of Formula E. But of course, for those that don't know, Puebla is a new track as far as what Mexico gives to offer. The usual circuit in Mexico City, of course, um, being used for um, COVID reasons, which is a, a hugely important thing. For yourself, hit, hitting up a new track, a um, lot of interesting things. Got interesting attack mode and turn A and whatnot. Um, for yourself, how do you prepare for a new circuit like this? As far as research goes and um, how do you approach it first of all i think we spend a lot of time in the simulator back at the, the workshop um, we get scanned versions of the tracks so so basically we get to learn the, the layout and all the small details when we're back on the simulator of course most of the time there's formally things change by the time we arrive so we've just done the track walk and, and and it's quite obvious that some things are different some of the corners are a little bit tighter the tarmac is strange there's lots of different types of time like some smooth some bumpy so uh, of course there's, there's going to be the challenge to understand that first thing tomorrow as well as it, it could also rain at some point as well um so yeah um i think also with the with the attack mode like you mentioned it's quite quite different and tricky compared to anything we're used to in terms of we actually go around another part of the track to activate it at the moment so so yeah, it should be pretty interesting and, and yeah, it should uh, create an interesting race. So what goes down on a Friday in a world of Formula E? Because of course, what's going on is we have the double headers, all the qualities, all the kind of free practices happens across the Saturday and Sunday. And of course, a lot of activity going on around you. So as, as of the time we're speaking, I believe it's almost coming up to 12 o'clock there. So uh, what's the prep? What is, what is a Friday for Oliver Rowland in the uh, Nissan Edams team? Yeah, so um, actually a long drive to the circuit here in Puebla. The, the, the hotel's quite a long way away, so it takes about an hour to get in from the hotel. Wow. And then we arrived there by 9.45, so uh, we have the track walk between 10 and 11, so we've just finished that. 
then various different media activities throughout the day. And then later on, we do the shakedown. So we get three laps at a low power just to, to make sure everything's working correctly. Uh, debrief with the engineers, um, make a plan ahead of tomorrow and uh, get back and get some rest ready for the start in a few months. And for our audience that haven't had the opportunity to get involved on the world of Formula E, which is ridiculous that they're missing out because the roster and the colleagues you have to compete with is, is incredible. And um, of course, in Puebla and many circuits across the calendar year, there are double headers. So from racing on a Saturday to Sunday, what are the important and what are the key things you will pick up from a, from a Saturday that goes into a Sunday? I mean, it depends really on how Saturday goes. Um, obviously, if it's not so good and you struggle in terms of pace and, and things like that, you'll look to kind of reset and change quite a lot in terms of chassis setup, maybe do a bit of research on the driving side, see what you can improve. Um, on the country, if it's a very good day, you're looking to make small changes, uh, fine-tune everything, and, and you have to understand and know and accept that the following day is going to be extremely tight because everybody understands the track and, and, and you know, it's... It's, it's going to be extremely difficult. The second days here are always very tough because everybody knows the track so well that actually it's sometimes a, you can end up absolutely nowhere being two tenths off. Certainly an interesting track. Of course, one of the defining features, um, you know, it's a big old oval track. So very exciting things to see. Um, something we like to do on these, on our interviews of our kind of athletes and sport and talent is to get to know them a little better personally um, throughout this thing. So we've asked this to um, other colleagues from the world of Formula E, personal items. What do you bring for yourself? That It doesn't necessarily come with the team as far as what goes into race day, but anything you will bring from good old, you know, straight out, you know, repping Barnsley, of course. But uh, what do you bring that is essential to you? You mean in terms of bringing... Yeah, travel, uh, travel items. Yeah, travel items. Quite a funny question, actually. At the beginning of the season, I was even bringing food, cooking things to make my breakfast in the room. Incredible. But, uh, <clears throat> recent, recently, a lot less because the, we've changed the way we do our preparation a little bit. We get to go home before, whereas we used to go to Le Mans for three or four days and then head all the way to the race. So you'd be away for nine or ten days. You have to bring a lot of clothes. And I would like to bring the stuff to to cook some food and just make sure because sometimes when you come to even places like Saudi and things like yeah. that, you eat in the food. You want to maintain a good diet as well. So, so I would say that. And, and more recently, not a lot. I've been traveling quite light because we've been here for three or four days. Um, so yeah, not an awful lot. I would say just my probably my northern grit. I'll bring with me and and that's about it. And that's it. I mean, now you've got a couple of seasons under your belt now as well. It's kind of like you kind of figure out how to pack smart. It's not like you're going to be bringing all kinds of gadgets and stuff to keep you entertained. But nevertheless, of course, you know, us being the Brits here, um, it's exciting that without obviously taking our mind too off um, Mexico, but we've got London City Circuit Race, indoor and outdoor in and around the XL Centre out here in Docklands, which is just a stone's throw from me over here. Um, July 24th, 25th. How exciting is that to have a fresh new race on home soil? Yeah, it's super cool. And I think uh, they've raced in London before for me, but I've never attended a race there. So it's going to be a pretty special. I think also the venue and the circuit is pretty cool. I've, I actually visited it probably two years ago now um, with Formula E. Um, and the inside outside going up onto another level is uh, pretty unique. And I don't think you get to see that very often. So I think. Yeah, it's going to be good and uh, obviously racing in front of friends and family and the home crowd as well. There's nothing really beats that, so, so for sure there'll be a bit of extra energy there. I love it. It's just, it's just it's so London, isn't it? Just we do things a little differently than everywhere else. But that's the exciting thing about Formula, Formula E to other you know race divisions. It's uh, we offer something a little different. For yourself, Ollie, of course, at the moment, all the rage is um, you know the Euros, of course. It's as us English people are hoping it comes home something we like to figure out from our colleague or well, from people that we get to interview is um what sports are you personally a fan of outside of your formula e bubble i would say the biggest fan would be motor gp i'm, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm very motor gp I, I enjoy watching it i think it's amazing what some of the riders and some things they can do i follow football so um i support barnsley um, which okay. they had a pretty good season, so I've been following them. I'm not a huge football fan, but I like to support them. Um, they, had, they had a great season, so uh, 
So yeah, it's good to uh, it's good to venture into other sports a little bit as well. Come on the tykes, and of course, Mo GP, incredible. Um, you know, it's a shame we didn't have a British racer in there at the, at the top division at the moment, but fingers crossed, we got a few up and comers. Um, also interesting because you bring up football. I was having a little look at your followers, trying to get to know a bit more of yourself. Um, interesting follow in the football sense. I saw you follow Philip Coutinho, and I was thinking, okay, that's uh, I, I thought, okay, if he follow, follows Coutinho, then you know, you never know. Maybe maybe he could join Barnsley one day. We could do a bit of agent Oliver. That would be that would be a touch. Um, but finally, um, from me, Oliver, as we ride off into the sunset, um, for again for our audience, we love trying to get him excited about sports that we love. What is it about Formula E that you love and you enjoy being a part of? I think it's the the, the whole thing. You know, it's, it's a complete package. I think. First of all, we're, we're doing a good cause. Um, you know, we know that we have to improve in terms of creating a cleaner and greener future for everything. So, of course, that's that's number one priority. And I think from a sports inside and a, and a personal level, it's extremely competitive. It's very unpredictable. Because to win on a certain day, you have to have everything perfect. And I, and I like having to, to really stretch myself and, and compete against the best. And, and for me, that's... That's one of the most special things about Formula E. I think we also have a huge high level of professionalism between all the manufacturers and things like that. Um, and I suppose, lastly, we travel to many, many amazing cities all around the world. Um, and and usually, what's quite unusual for motorsport is that we get to we get to stay in those cities. You know, the, the tracks are built there, and we get to stay right in the center of, the, of these cities. And I don't think there's many sports in the world that don't get to do that. When my first experience of Formula E was at Temple Hof in Berlin, my mind was blown away by the use of that airport. And uh, yeah, this is a great thing about Formula E. And after Mexico, we've got you know we've got New York again, another double header, London and beyond. So Oli, um, good luck this weekend. Enjoy Mexico, enjoy New York, and hopefully we'll uh, get to see you around London um, when that comes around. So thank you very much for stopping by and chatting to us.